And that kind of summarizes today's video. Let's back it up, boys. And thank you guys for- Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the Ninon fan comp, or the Ninon comp, or the comp with Ninon in it. It's a very well-studied comp, so today I'm just going to break it down and hopefully give you a couple of ways to deal with it. I'm going to talk about it on the attack and on the defense and so on. So the Ninon comp is composed of the following units. We've got Lima, Ninon, Saren, Mitsuki, and Yuki. Obviously, the star of the team is Ninon, but she has a lot of help from the rest of the cast, right? So the way that the theory works is that Saren is juicing up Ninon. Yuki is therefore juicing up Ninon as well. Lima is... I'll get to Lima in a second. But Mitsuki is also laying down an AoE defense downfield. Ninon then just goes whoosh. I, I know that sounds like a whip, but it's actually a fan, guys. And she kind of like smokes everybody. Again, guys, this is a very well-studied comp, so there's probably a lot of counters already, but I'm going to show you guys what I did to deal with it. And funnily enough, Mage Melt actually doesn't 100% work against this. If anything, it's actually the other way around, and I'll show you guys that very, very soon. All right, so I talked about everyone's role in the team, except for Lemurs, and I need to explain something a little bit. So if you guys look at this very detailed diagram, we have Reno and Ninon over here, and we have the enemy team. So at the start of the battle, what happens is that the enemy team comes up to about here. So for example, their position position one, position two, three, four, and five. Reno and Ninon, actually how they work is that they attack the enemies that are within their range. They kind of have like an attack radius. And so if half the team are in the attack radius, then they will attack half the team. However, what happens is that if you include Lima, the enemy team will actually come up closer towards Reno and Ninon before Lima gets into the battle. So if you have a look at this, the enemy team will actually end up in here, which is position two. And so all five of the team members of the enemy team are actually going to be attacked by Reno and Ninon. Ninon. At this point in time, that is the true utility of Lima in the Reno and Ninon comps. So to illustrate this further, I have this image from ACI. Thank you so much. He left quite a detailed YouTube comment about this and he gave me this picture. It's, I, I really appreciate it. So yeah, if I zoom in a bit, you can see that the top image is with Lima and the bottom image is without. So you can see how their team, the enemy team has actually shuffled forward. You see that this ring is over here. They're actually almost standing towards the back of that ring, right? So this means that Ninon can attack all of these guys because she, her range is about here. However, if we had Ninon attacking this team she might be able to hit like the Kokoro maybe the Neneka maybe so again just to recap Lima is essentially pulling the enemy team towards your Ninon so she can attack everybody Lima is so important it's it makes me sad all right with that being said let's hop over to some examples so one of the most edge use cases it might not actually be edge but like it's it's, it's pretty funny how this plays out right okay so I'm just going to show you guys but essentially what's happening here is we're going to have a mage melt comp okay we've got anna hatsune and io we've got a attack speed buffer and a jun and guys this is a very classical mage melt comp and against that we have ninon comp so what's going to happen here is that the mages are all going to cuck the ninon and as you guys know you gain tp when you take damage so she's actually going to have an almost charge pretty much charge yubi and she's going to fan him hard so if we play through this slowly see watch the ninon get wrecked because because she's actually taking damage because the lima hasn't come into the battle yet right so that means that her UB gets charged quite a fair bit. Keep in mind, after that, we also have Saren and Yuki that are about to juice up the Ninon, and away she goes. So, boom, did you see that? Did you guys see that? Like, look, look at that, look at that TP gain. Watch that, watch this. Look, from that to full. And then she fans them. And look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Squishies are dead. What happens after is actually pretty funny. Immediately after this, she actually just fans them and they all die. Ready? She's gonna skill. Bam, and they all die. Oh my gosh. And then she gets the UB again because she's just taking so much damage as well. Oh, Ninon. Oh, Ninon. And the rest is history. Yeah, they're pretty much dead now. So I've got another example here. Effectively, another Mage Melt classic com, except we've got the Nozomi variant with Akari instead of Anna. It's still going to play out almost exactly the same, and we're going to see some real carnage. So, Ninon. Oh, didn't get taken down that much, but she still gets the big juicer and she fans them. And then right after that, she is going to use her skill two and kill the rest of the three in the back line. Bam. Oh, Akari lived. Uh, yeah, I mean, it still, it still works out the same. Regardless, what this means is that you don't take Mage Melt into a Ninon comp, and if you see a Mage Melt on defense, you take the Ninon comp. That's pretty straightforward, but when else is Ninon comp actually good then? Unfortunately, I don't have anything to show you because I don't have Ninon, but I've counted the comp so many times that I pretty much know the comp. <laughs> also, I haven't really been attacked by any Ninon comps recently because you don't really use a Ninon comp into a stall team. So what else can you really attack with Ninon comps? There are a couple of weaknesses with the Ninon comp, right? Yuki needs to give TP to the Ninon 
Ninon that it should immediately make you think Tamaki. Ninon is in position two. I don't know, guys. You guys should be thinking something. I don't know. Uh, Yuki? Maho? P2 blinds? Oh, boy. So those are the, kind of the main things. This comp is just so fun. She's just fanning at them and just killing everybody. Oh, my gosh. I... Ah, but otherwise, what I would actually bring this into is any comp that looks very disorganized or doesn't have an idea behind it and does not have a Maho or a Yuki in it. Honestly, I've lost to a lot of blind Ninon and Reno comps. And what I mean by blind is I get to Princess Arena, I get to the Battle 3 where it's like blind and there's a freaking Ninon comp and I die. Usually my Team 3 is not very well thought out and I just get wrecked. If I threw my Maho in there, which I usually do these days, but I don't actually make it to Team 3 these days. You guys can interpret that how you will. Sometimes I have a chance, but on the other hand, I do get blind blown up by Reno comps as well. I think that if you're ever going to use the Ninon comp or the Reno comp, to be honest, on defense, it's going to be on one of the blind teams in Princess Arena. But yeah, with that being said, you can see that Ninon actually claps those like low HP units and and they just, they just die. On the other side though, this actually leads us to the start of countering the Ninon comp. What in the world can I do against this? And boys, I have the answer. Oh, a answer to that because there are a lot of answers to be honest. First thing that comes to mind when I see this is that you should build a bruiser team because if you're able to actually outlast uh, all of the Ninon damage, then you can actually just mow them down one by one. It is a slower process, but it's a much more, I guess, uh, sturdy process to, to kind of like roll over them very slowly. One of the key units that I would try against this would be like, like Akino or Shizuru. Oh my god, Shizuru would be so good because she has like the physical defense buffed for everyone. Alas, I have neither, so I will just show you guys what I did. <laughs> so guys, we're back in Princess Arena and I've got a comp here <laughs> and this is not usually my go-to comp. It's because Princess Arena, uh, I just have such a hard time putting together three comps, right? But this time I was determined to take down this Ninon comp, so I actually built for it. So the idea here, guys, is that I'm just going to cock that Ninon so hard that she can't do anything. Got my two-star Miyako up front because I am a clan battle player. I don't upgrade my Miyako. <laughs> I've got the Maho blinding that Ninon. Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys are going to love this when this plays through. And I've got the Tamaki and the Saren. And what's actually more important is the Saren idea. So as you guys know, Saren does enemy damage. So that means that the lower HP she gets, the more damage she does. What ends up happening is that she actually chunks a whole bunch of them because she takes damage from Ninon, but is actually able to survive. Saren is kind of that bruiser character that I'm talking about, that Akino or that Shizuru, actually more like an Akino, right? If you can live through the Ninon, you can actually kind of just roll through the rest of the comp. And so that's kind of the rationale I took for like two tanks and the Maho. And I figured that two damage dealers would be enough. If this Tamaki was instead an Akino, I reckon this would work way better. Ah, either way, let's have a see what happens. All right, so we're entering the battle and you see that the Ninon has taken a bit of damage. However, this is a little bit different from the Mage Melt comp, right? Because the Ninon has not taken enough damage to fan us real fast. Again, back to that Mage Melt example, the reason why the Mage Melt worked so well is because the Mage Melt attacked the Ninon and juiced her TP up so fast. However, I don't have much damage on this comp, right? So that means that Ninon's Yubi is going to be delayed. On the other hand, my Tamaki is about to strike that Yuki and let's see what happens here. Oh, a bit slower, please. Okay, so... We've got the Tamaki about to fire off against, okay, goodbye, Yuki, goodbye, Yuki. And she gets TP back too. All right, so the Ninon fans here. Oh, three misses. I don't know if you guys saw that, but, I, oh, oh man, that, um, oh man, I, th I think I just, um, you know, that was, that was some real good shit. Okay, so you can see here, Saren, her enmity damage, right? Okay, it, it, does, it doesn't look that like, it doesn't look like that much. But in in the long in the long term in the in the grand scheme of things it is it is pretty good guys it is pretty good that's that's my rationale anyway but the more important thing to note is that you can see like they're not making it through they're not making it through right my Miyako is nowhere near dead there is no magic damage on that side and that's kind of what I took the Tamaki for right to take out the Yuki to make sure that the Miyako lives and there's no way Yuki is gonna kill my Miyako anyway right a two star Miyako okay. So our Tamaki is down again, and obviously a lot of this hinges on RNG, which is um, a little bit scary. I think it's okay to rely on RNG on this one because you guys are about to see what happens next. My actually carries, they actually kind of die, and then we actually still mow through them with a healer and two tanks. Oof, and there we go. That is it. That is it. And we just mow through the rest of the team. And the blind is still going, and what, they're up to Ninon, and that's that's kind of it, right? One on the front dead, one on the back dead, there's three left. Like, this bruiser, oh my god, that miss is brutal. Those misses are actually brutal. And and they just can't do anything. They, they, they actually legit just can't do anything. They don't have enough DPS to break through two tanks and a healer support, absolutely loaded machine gun Maho. 
and that's it that's the end uh, i'm just gonna play through this real fast i have one more comp to show you guys and uh it's it looks a little bit different to this because you know i'm, I'm experimenting right guys i don't <laughs> i don't have a whole bunch of characters so so i need to i need to make do with what i have and goodbye i miss oh god okay let's go all right guys, so here is the second comp that I run and the idea behind this is a little bit similar to the first. It's that you sustain through the Neon so much and then you slowly roll through them. As you can see, I don't have too much damage going on and I don't want to trigger off that Neon fan like early on. So there's not much left to be said and let's just hit the replay. All right, so we're going to hit the Neon a couple of times. It's going to do like pretty much no damage and the Jun is going to be enough to tank it all, to be honest. Like they, there is no damage here aside from the Neon. And the Neon still hasn't fired it off. Oh, look at that blind. Oh my god, here we go. Here we go. Misses, misses. All I see is misses. Right. And the Jun has survived way long enough to actually get her Yubi off. The Yuki, I mean, sorry, the uh, Yui has actually been able to get her Yui off. And, man, hmm, interesting. So, think about what just happened, right? The Lima actually pulled my comp towards their comp but the Ninon was actually only able to hit the first three characters does this mean that Yui and Maho despite having the Lima pull them in is still out of range yeah that is exactly what it means guys and honestly at no point did I calculate that so again I'm very lucky that this happened but this is definitely the comp that I'm going to be using against Ninon comps moving forward so if we continue with the playback we've got a oh my gosh the, the Saren just hasn't taken enough damage to do big damage. I've just got way too much sustain for him to break through. And uh, I'm just slowly, slowly rolling through his comp. Like, look, it's... And then now the Saren is blinded. Oh, miss. Oh, my God, that miss. That was, that was some... Oh, that was so dank. And Miski just doesn't have enough. Miski just doesn't have enough. Like, they, none of them have enough. It's not. It's just not enough to get through this. There's just way too much sustain. This is not exactly a store comp. Like, this comp would be really easy to break through, but it's more like a sustained comp. So, so I think the idea, again, let me reiterate the idea. The idea is to sustain through Ninon's shit so that you can just slowly mow, mow through the team. All right, we're pretty good here. Let's just call it stops there. So one thing I do want to address is that I do have about like 1.4K power on this team. And then on the team before, I had about a 1.5K power on them. What I do want to say is that I don't think that the power difference is going to make a difference. I just unfortunately did not have any other units that I could possibly come up with to deal with this. I'd really like to try them on Neon comps, but unfortunately everyone hides their Neon comps and I just don't know like, you know, if it is a Neon comp in there. There is nobody that is like brave enough to run Neon comps in a battle arena because everyone knows how to counter it and now hopefully you guys should too but really i don't think that this power difference is going to make a difference because like you saw how it went right despite these two units dying the rest of my team still mowed through them the concept was still there there was no way that they could win and honestly i think that was even more true for this one like at no point was like my team at any like they weren't even close to dying right they weren't even close to dying we rode through them with five units left and all of them were like relatively healthy for most of the fight i really don't think an extra 1.4k would have helped defend against this i mean you guys could try it out and you know come back in the comments and just slam me and be like no you're wrong i'm pretty confident in this one and this one is pretty okay aside from jun it's pretty free to play ish we've got two starter characters two dungeon coin characters and a tank switching the jun out for like a miyako or a nozomi i don't think it's going to change anything if anything the miyako is going to cuck the ninon even more nozomi is generally a just stronger like but i'm pretty sure the nozomi is even probably a pekka and three could probably live through all of this the amount of sustain in this comp is just like there's just too much going on and i don't think the ninon can get through it all right guys i'm going to wrap it up there i think you guys get the idea of the Ninon comp. When you should use it to attack, you should pretty much never use it to defend. How to counter it if somebody is caught defending with a Ninon comp. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap up this video and leave you guys with a secret message. <laughs> if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. You've made it to the end of the video. Thank you very much. Honestly, I really like Ninon and the Ninon comp. There's nothing left to say except goodbyes. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, if this video has helped you, consider liking it, commenting it, sharing it. I hope you guys have been enjoying these arena videos. I really like these arena videos. I'm not that good at it, but, but I've also been crippled like crazy in the Kami bracket, so everything hurts. But I'm gonna stop whinging and just say thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.